From a concrete fortress in New York, built to withstand a nuclear attack, and a brand new power station in China, capable of withstanding almost any disaster imaginable, to a mysterious pyramid in North Dakota, designed for nuclear strikes, and a not-so-secret government facility buried thousands of feet under a mountain in Colorado. We present to you 10 mega-projects capable of surviving a nuclear strike. Blue Ridge Summit, a small town in Franklin County, Pennsylvania, located about 150 kilometers northwest of Washington, D.C., has a population of less than a thousand people. However, the town's noteworthiness lies not in its size, but in a massive underground government facility hidden within it, not marked on any map. The Raven Rock Mountain Complex is a multifunctional underground campus spanning 650 acres, built inside a mountain. Constructed in the 1940s, at a time when humanity first developed weapons post potent enough to obliterate all life on Earth, Raven Rock was designed to endure. In the event of a full-scale nuclear attack, the U.S. government would use this bunker to continue governing the country and maintain its operations. The Raven Rock complex is often referred to as the Underground Pentagon, featuring all the necessary amenities for government operations. It resembles a small town nestled inside the mountain, comprising five three-story operational buildings. Three buildings were operational in the 1950s during President Truman's administration with two additional structures completed much later. The complex is equipped with fire and medical departments, a medical facility, and several cafeterias. Built to withstand nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks, Raven Rock can accommodate up to 5,000 people in an emergency, likely including high-ranking government officials and their families. In the event of a weapon of mass destruction threat, Pentagon officials can reach the bunker via helicopter in under 40 minutes. Upon landing, they can reach the western gates by car in less than five minutes. If access is blocked for some reason, they can use the eastern and southern gates for refuge. The facility remains highly classified, with few internal images available online. Notably, Raven Rock was utilized during the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, when U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney was evacuated there to safeguard his life. Rumors suggest that something unusual is occurring at 33 Thomas Street in New York City. Sandwiched between the Empire State Building and the Statue of Liberty, this building is a windowless concrete skyscraper standing 167.5 meters, 550 feet tall. Designed by architect John Carl Warnecke, it was constructed in 1974. Initially, it functioned as a massive telephone switch for three digital long-distance automatic telephone exchanges, including AT&T and Verizon. The brutalist-style building was famous for long queues of people, processing up to 175 million calls daily during its peak. 1974 was during the Cold War, a time when the USA and the Soviet Union lived under the constant threat of nuclear attack. Amidst all this, supercritical telecommunication towers were developed, protected against nuclear weapons. The building at 33 Thomas Street might not withstand a direct nuclear blast, but a nearby missile strike with inevitable physical damage would not lead to the destruction or deformation of the structure. The building lacks windows, with the only vulnerable spots being ventilation openings on the 10th and 29th floor. Floors. Its construction is essentially a gigantic concrete slab, making it radiation resistant. This fortress is not just resilient to external factors, but also houses food supplies sufficient for a week for 3,000 people along with water and fuel for generators. According to documents from American technical specialist and former CIA employee Edward Snowden, the building is used as a secret espionage center by the National Security Agency of the USA. Hiding in plain sight in the heart of New York City, the building is known as Titan Point. It routes international phone calls and houses the Skid Row program focused on intercepting satellite communications. The Cheyenne Mountain Complex is a giant in El Paso County, Colorado, located about 10 kilometers southeast of Colorado Springs. This area includes a large state park, an exclusive neighborhood for wealthy stars, and one of the most secured military bases in the USA. The Cheyenne Mountain Complex, situated at an altitude of about 300 meters above sea level, has limited access. Many believe it's solely the NORAD complex, or the place housing only the North American Aerospace Defense Command, but it's more than that. It also accommodates accommodates other U.S. Armed Forces commands, including the United States Space Force Space Command, the Strategic Command, 
and the National Security Agency. Some assume that the mountain complex is no longer functional, but they are mistaken. Even after the North American Aerospace Defense Command moved to Peterson Air Force Base in 2006, the complex continued to operate with the remaining staff. It remains operational in case a reliable shelter and control center for the country's defense are needed. The complex is designed to withstand a nuclear attack. In the 1983 movie War Games, a scene depicted the giant bunker doors being exploded. These doors, weighing about 25 tons, still exist and are remotely operated. They are designed to withstand any threat, whether it be biological or nuclear weapons, electromagnetic pulses, or natural disasters. Accessing the bunker is not straightforward as the complex has a complicated structure. At its core is a system of intersecting tunnels, located more than 600 meters deep. Three tunnels intersect with four others, forming a grid-like structure. The bunker walls are left untreated to minimize the risk of rock collapse, reinforced with 115,000 anchor bolts. Inside the tunnels are 15 metal structures, 12 three-level, and a few simpler buildings, not touching the mountain's internal surfaces, and set on massive springs to compensate for seismic activity and vibrations caused by a nuclear explosion. Additionally, in the event of a nuclear attack, the complex utilizes a series of blast valves to keep the air inside, making the bunker airtight. There's no shortage of water as the complex has a 1.5 million gallon water reserve, plus a natural spring inside the mountain suitable for use. When it comes to pyramids, most of us think of ancient architectural structures somewhere in the middle of Egypt. But what if we tell you that this is not the only place in the world where you can find them? In the center of North Dakota is Noma, a tiny village with a population of just 35 people. This is part of Cavalier County in North Dakota, about 50 kilometers south of the Canadian border. There's a bar, two churches, and about 10 streets creating a small settlement. It seems there can be nothing remarkable here, but beyond the plains and trees, you can discover an abandoned Cold War era facility known as the Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Complex, part of the Safeguard Program. Today, most people refer to this facility as the MPR Pyramid. The complex was a group of buildings united by one purpose, to protect the United States. The missile defense system included launch and control centers for anti-missile complexes, forming two tiers of defense. Among them, the endo-atmospheric layer with close-range sprint anti-missiles and the exo-atmospheric layer, carried out by long-range LIM-49 Spartan missiles. At the time of construction in 1975, the estimated cost of the facility was $6 billion. With inflation, now the cost of a similar project would be over $35 billion. In addition to the main pyramid, there is a set of missile launch facilities and dozens of small shafts equipped with nuclear warheads. The pyramid serves as a radar platform designed to track missiles from Russia and eliminate them over Canada. If even one of these missiles landed nearby, the pyramid would withstand the explosion thanks to its sturdy construction of 27 million pounds of steel and 74,000 cubic feet of concrete. Unfortunately, Fortunately, the facility existed and successfully functioned for only one day. Full operation of the program, involving extreme caution, began on October 1, 1975, but already on October 2, the House of Representatives shut it down. Politicians believed the program would be ineffective and that trying to shoot down nuclear weapons over the friendly territory of a neighboring country was too risky and could lead to subsequent conflict and escalation. Technically, the project was closed in April 1976 after operating for just over six months, which testifies to colossal and unjustified expenditures of several billion dollars. In 2022, the facility was purchased by a large corporation as real estate. They plan to invest $500 million in the project to transform the missile defense system into a cryptocurrency mining center. Less than 20 kilometers south of Omaha, Nebraska, lies one of the most crucial U.S. Air Force bases. Built during World War I, the base is known for manufacturing aircraft that dropped nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Today, it hosts the headquarters of the United States Strategic Command and the Doomsday Plane Boeing E-4B. 
This airborne government command center offers 5,000 square feet of office space. The plane includes a conference room, first aid and journalist facilities, and several bedrooms for rest. In a worst-case scenario, this aircraft could serve as the location where the President of the United States and other federal officials coordinate war efforts, assuming it's unsafe on the ground. As one might guess, the Doomsday plane is protected against nuclear weapons and radioactive fallout. The cockpit is equipped with special protective masks to prevent the pilot from being blinded by blasts. The plane's windows feature a special grid that shields against electromagnetic pulse waves. As of 2023, Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan are the only U.S. presidents to have flown on the doomsday plane. Both flights were training exercises, with Reagan's flight notably absent from his diaries. It remains unknown what the president did on board and what decisions he made. The doomsday plane can be refueled mid-air, allowing it to remain aloft for three days before needing to land. The U.S. Air Force has four such planes, with at least one always ready to take off at any time of the year. The largest gravity dam hydroelectric power station located on the Yangtze River in Hubei province is a critical infrastructure for China. The dam is nearly 2.5 kilometers long and over 180 meters high. As of 2018, the Three Gorges is the heaviest structure in the world, weighing over 65.5 million tons. The reservoir of the Three Gorges Dam stretches 600 kilometers upstream and contains approximately 10 trillion gallons of water. A nuclear attack could lead to all the water, which received a dose of radiation, being released downstream. Chinese officials claim that the dam hydroelectric power station is built considering possible threats and is protected from nuclear weapons. The Deputy Secretary General of the Chinese Society of Hydropower Engineering asserts that the Three Gorges could survive a massive attack with nuclear warheads. More than 27 million cubic meters of concrete and 463,000 tons of steel were used to build the dam. To comprehend the scale of the construction, this amount of metal would be enough to build the Eiffel Tower 63 times. In the early 1990s, Taiwan threatened to bomb the dam if China dared to invade their territory. It's presumed that cruise missiles and bombers could damage the dam, causing significant harm. If successful, the aftermath could lead to a catastrophic flood that could kill 400 million people. A large part of the People's Liberation Army is in the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River, and if the dam collapses, they would lose 90% of their forces. China is skeptical of these threats, as any missile strikes would have to penetrate their quick reacting air defense, which responds to any target that breaches their airspace. The high-strength reinforced concrete dam Three Gorges is built to withstand a direct nuclear strike, and there's no doubt that nothing can destroy it. If you have diving skills and the courage to dive 370 feet somewhere in the English Channel, you might accidentally stumble upon the longest underwater tunnel in the world. It connects the French port city of Calais and Folkestone in the south of England. The Euro Tunnel serves as the only physical link between the United Kingdom and mainland Europe. At its deepest point, the tunnel is 75 meters below the seabed and 115 meters below sea level. The total length of the two-track railway tunnel is 51 kilometers, of which 39 kilometers kilometers run under the Strait of Dover. Interestingly, the tunnel is not just a long tube dug by workers to connect England and France, but rather three tunnels intersecting each other. Passenger and freight trains travel through two single-track tunnels, each directed one way. The Euro Tunnel also features a road and maintenance area, allowing workers to promptly rectify any shortcomings in its operation. One might assume that this high-tech project was implemented recently, but the concept of this tunnel was first presented back in 1802 by the French mining engineer Albert Mathieu Favier. It took a full 192 years to realize the idea, although construction itself only began in late 1987. Could the tunnel serve as a reliable shelter in the event of a nuclear threat? The Gothard Base Tunnel serves as an example, as it offers a refuge from the blast, but not from radiation that freely spreads inside due to entrances on both sides of the tunnel. Notably, before construction began, the United Kingdom considered using a nuclear bomb to simplify the process. When considering survival in a nuclear strike, one wonders if nuclear power plants could withstand a bomb blast like other structures on our list. Assuming an explosion occurs nearby, one facility on China's eastern coast has a high chance of remaining intact. The Sanmen nuclear power plant, with two operational reactors, was constructed between 2009 and 2018. The Chinese government invested about 50 billion yuan, equivalent to 7 billion U.S. dollars, in this project. 
The foundation was laid in February 2008, with the first energy unit alone requiring 5,200 cubic meters of concrete, 950 tons of steel reinforcement, and over a thousand anchor bolts. Initially, the plan was to construct four blocks, but this was later revised. The launch was scheduled for 2013 and 2014, but following the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, the start of operations was postponed due to changes in technical specifications and safety concerns. The first successful launch occurred on June 21, 2018, and a few months later, the plant entered commercial operation. A nearby nuclear explosion is unlikely to cause significant damage to the plant. However, concerns remain, as radioactive fallout could lead to more catastrophic consequences. San Men Nuclear Power Plant stands out from other stations as it uses next-generation AP-1000 pressurized water reactors, a unique development by an American-Japanese company. These reactors boast increased efficiency, cost-effectiveness, and enhanced safety. Currently, only 10 such reactors exist worldwide, with four in China at the San Men Station two primary and two backup units for emergencies. The reactors are cooled using natural forces, preventing rupture of the containment shell and release of radioactive materials. As a result, even in the event of a nuclear strike, the plant and its safety systems should handle the emergency, preventing the spread of radiation from the reactors. The Alps, Europe's highest and most extensive mountains, stretch 1,200 kilometers in a crescent shape across eight countries, encircling Italy and complicating travel between Northern Europe and Italy. To address this, the Swiss government built the Gotthard Base Tunnel, situated 7,000 feet deep. The construction of this 57-kilometer-long tunnel took 17 years, making it the longest and deepest railway tunnel in the world. Now, it is open not only for trains, but also for road traffic, becoming an integral part of the Swiss A2 highway. Traffic can be challenging, especially during the resort season due to the influx of tourists. The Swiss government agreed to construct the tunnel at a cost of $12 billion in 1992. Builders spent nearly two decades carrying out blasting operations and removing rock of various hardnesses. Although the work was completed in 2010, the first trial runs occurred in August 2015, with the tunnel officially opening on December 11, 2016. During the construction, 28 million tons of stone were removed, followed by the use of four million cubic meters of concrete. Is this tunnel long and sturdy enough to withstand a nuclear blast? This was not a consideration during its construction, so it is only speculative that it would be relatively safe inside. However, the tunnel is a passage under the Alps, open at both ends, which does not make it protected from radiation. Unlike the Cheyenne Mountain bunker with its filtration systems, food, and water supplies, one can only stay in the Gotthard Tunnel until the limited provisions in the train or car run out. During the Cold War, Canada and the United States developed a series of supercomputers named SAGE. SAGE was an American system for semi-automatic coordination of interceptor actions by programming autopilots with ground-based computers. These computers took readings from radars across the continent and combined them to create a unified and secure North American airspace. Ideally, SAGE was meant to detect incoming nuclear missiles and prevent potential catastrophes. Given that the computer was a valuable strategic asset, weighing 250 tons, it needed protection. Thus, in the 1960s, Canada began constructing an underground facility protected from nuclear strikes. Locals in the small town of North Bay in northeastern Ontario call the NORAD complex the Hole. This place has two advantages, a granite base, making the bunker robust and protected against any type of attack, and nearby Trout Lake, capable of providing survivors with ample drinking water. The bunker, over 180 meters deep, became a haven for the Sage supercomputer. It occupied only one of the floors and an area of 20,000 square feet, allowing the shelter to accommodate 200 people capable of living there for several months. The bunker includes a gym, a barbershop, a medical clinic, and sleeping areas for a full life. The bunker is capable of withstanding a blast of four megatons, 267 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. A power outage would also not be a problem, as there are 194 batteries capable of meeting all needs. To get inside the NORAD complex, one must pass through one of the tunnels. The first tunnel, nearly two kilometers long, connects the bunker to the nearest U.S. Air Force base. The second tunnel is in North Bay, and its length is just under one kilometer. In the 2000s, when the threat of nuclear weapon use decreased, the computer was shut down. In 2012, the location was used for filming the Canadian post-apocalyptic movie The Colony, starring Kevin Zegers and Lawrence Fishburne. 
And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel and click the bell. For me, your activity is the best reward. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Bye.